In uh, this episode of the Internet of Things show, we will show you how to connect this tiny device to Azure IoT Hub, leveraging the device provisioning service. And for this, we have Nicole coming again. And they will actually tell us a bit more about what it takes to connect an actual real device to the Azure IoT Hub device provisioning service. Sure, I'd love to. Um, so, but before I tell you exactly how to set this up, I want yep. to show you what the installation process for this device okay. is like. So I've set this device up like it's gone through the factory, and this is what the installation process looks like. So it could be that one or another one. It could they're be all like just fresh out of the factory. They're, they're right? all fresh out of the factory. So what I'm going to do is plug it in. And you can see on the little bitty screen that it's connecting. And it's going through the provisioning process right now. OK. Uh, navigating so the establishing Wi-Fi connection. Yep, it's establishing Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. Then it will go to the provisioning service and say, I'm a device. I'd like to verify my X409 certificate okay. and tell me where I need to connect Got as it. a result of that. Okay. So in just a couple seconds now, it'll go from running to say it's connected to the device provisioning service, like it says right now. Awesome. DPS connected. And so. I should have done beforehand is shown before happens. So That's if you okay. look at my screen, Real life. we'll go on the manage enrollments and we'll see that this particular device, when I wanted to go set this up, I wanted to have it have a specific IoT of device ID. Okay. And I wanted to give it a tag of hello with a value of world and a desired property of, of something okay. that I just typed in. Okay. So now if I go back to this IoT hub where I have this device provisioned to, since okay. there's only one linked IoT hub. You can see that there's only one IoT device that's in my IoT hub. Okay. And if I click into this, I'll see that the device twin has been pre-populated with my tag and my desired awesome. property. So basically, went online, said, "Hey, I have this certificate." DPS said, "Hey, I know you. You've been you've been actually provisioned or attached to an IoT hub. Go connect to that IoT hub. And first connection, device twin synchronized and device." now has this configuration. Yeah. OK, awesome. So I've just set up with some junk data here, but you yeah. can imagine how powerful this could be when you set up a desired firmware version instead, where you have a device that might have been sitting in, in a, a storage warehouse for several months and has accumulated a backlog of security patches, where oh, the first thing it does when it connects is say, oh, wait, I'm out of date. Let me go patch myself before I actually start sending data. It's, it's very similar to what we're seeing with like lots of these IoT devices today, right? When mm -hmm. the first thing you do is like update the firmware, yeah, but you exactly. have to do it manually. Exactly. So now the DPS actually allows you to have this automated process to do all that. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but like, there's some black magic happening here, right? Yeah, exactly. So, what is it? What's so going on on the device actually? So, let me show you the in using Visual Studio Code what exactly I've done with this device. Okay. And so there, there basically are two steps to programming the device. Mm -hmm. The first step is giving this de this device a unique certificate, okay. which is what this that's currently on my screen is showing you. Okay. And what this is doing is basically populating the hardware security module, this itty bitty little chip right there, okay. with a unique certificate for this particular device. And because it's on the hardware security module, it actually is something that you cannot temper, you cannot actually access the data, right? Exactly. This, this one is using, I believe, fuses to make sure that that security is that the secrets stored in there are very secure. So mm -hmm. if anybody were to tamper with it, they'd break a fuse, and then the the HSM itself would now be it'd be broken. Yeah, and so they just don't have access to the <coughs> secrets stored in that chip. Okay. Uh, one other interesting thing to note is that some of these hardware security module manufacturers offer as a service the ability to preload their HSMs with a certificate if you provide them with a signing cert. Got so it. That so basically, in factory, you just basically put a module on your silicon that ready is ready to go. Basically. Exactly. Awesome. So that's that's what this first part is doing, and then the second part is the actual code that's at going through and getting this device ready for provisioning. So this particular device is using C. So it's, it's a simpler device. Okay. Uh, and this just goes through and it pulls the information that's stored in the, the hardware itself mm -hmm. and uses that to provision. Got it. Now, the okay. really interesting thing about this is that this exact same f uh, software can be used on every other device that I have as part of this device run okay. without having to make modifications. Okay. OK, I like that. So you were saying this is C because this is a tiny device, like kind of a real-time type of, uh, of uh, device. I think we're programming using Arduino for this one. But, uh, but we do also have support for other languages, right? Yes, we do. 
So we have C, C Sharp, Node, Java, and Python so for our device thing. SDKs. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. So basically, whichever language you prefer, uh, you can okay. leverage on your device. Take a language, any language. <laughs> awesome. OK, what else can you show us? Like, Because yeah. I have one device here. It was easy, so, right? Sure. So um, <laughs> like any demo is easy with one device, because yeah. you set everything up to work with this one device. But I actually have a second device here that's been set up using this exact same code. Okay. The only difference is that this particular HSM is physically distinct from that HSM, okay. which yeah. means that it has a different secret stored in it. And so that device, if I go back to this, so please note that this IoT Hub only has one device that's stored on it. Okay. And this particular device, whoops, is my demo device number two. Okay. Right there. Device so two. So while I plug this in and wait for it to. The same process. It was the same code. The only same difference code, is the, um, the HSM yep, and content. Going through the exact same negotiation with the provisioning okay. service, saying, hey, here's my certificate. Where should I go? Who am I? Okay. Where do I belong? And so we should magically see the device identity created in the other IT hub Yep. as soon as it comes online. Yep. And, and so this one has some tags and some desired properties as well. And you can see it's already been assigned. Um, okay. So it, that was actually, it's very fast of a process. It was faster than you. Yeah, it was. So if I go to my IoT Hub and look at my devices, you can now see that I've got a second device that you know, pretty much automatically showed up awesome. in my IoT Hub. Like that. And if I go to my device twin, you can see that the tag and the desired property are also there in Yeah, that's real zero touch provisioning, right? It, it really is. Because I can see that as a, as, a, as a way where you actually are the guy dispatching the devices on the factory floor or anywhere else. You don't have to care about, hey, the serial number, I need to collect that and register manually where it's been installed. The thing is just like connecting and yeah. getting its connection. Yeah, you don't have to, to mess with the device at installation time to make sure that it has the right connection string for its application installed. Yeah. You can just update that asynchronously in the service and everything's taken care of. So that's cool. So, um, some call to action here, because what we've seen here is like this kind of black magic I was saying that works super well. We've seen how to uh, manipulate the device provisioning service in the, in the Azure portal. Uh, on the device side of things, we have SDKs, but we do have samples as well, right? We do, yeah. And so for that very specific board, which is one of our um, Azure IoT dev kits, uh, you can find them uh, looking information on aka.ms slash IoT dash dev kit. And, uh, and basically, we have a sample for connecting to DPS directly from this little device, right? Mm -hmm. So anyone yeah, can reproduce that. We do also have samples, I guess, for Node and Java. You can run on your laptop to try things out, right? Yeah, and we offer simulated devices for uh, both the X509 flow as well as the TPM flow. Awesome. Well, you know what you have to do now. Thanks a lot for watching the uh, Internet of Things show, and thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Olivier.